Thank you, Grim Grimorons. Oh. I may have done a big oopsie. Yeah. And it's all thanks for me playing this one game, Grim Grimoire. Grim Grimoire is an obscure PS2 anime game published by Nippon Ishii Software and developed by Vanillaware that follows a trainee wish named Lilith Blonde and her adventures in the Tower of Silver Star, a magic school that teaches children how to create magical objects such as fairies, demons, and much more. But how? By using this. This is a Grimoire, and I'm gonna use this book to create the most adorable creature in the world. Only one problem, though. I don't know how to use this. Everything I make turns ugly, see? <laughs> Anyway, in this story arc, my objective is to play and review Grim Grimoire to learn magic and create the most adorable creature in the world. And hopefully not say the forbidden words in this book, though. So I'm gonna drag him to end humanity as well. <laughs> oh, nothing my adorable mascot, Timmy the Taco. Well, let's freaking do this. After a beautiful opening introduction, we come across Lilith Blonde, who is currently spending her first day of school in this academy, introducing herself to a whole variety of people, such as this powerful wizard named Garmel, a new friend named Margarina Surprise, and an elf named Gaff. Isn't he adorable? Cute? I'm not cute. Now handsome. Yeah, that's more like it. Well... I can cross off elves as the adorable creature I'm gonna make. Wanna know what else is not adorable? The fact that we can't wander the halls at night. Wait, why not? On a quiet night, just like tonight, a man met the witch in the hallway. Okay. But here's the scary part. Three days later, he was found cruelly tortured. Okay. And his face was unrecognizable. <laughs> Anyway, the knock ends up being none other than our new friend Margarina, who kinda almost died from the witch. Which begs the question, why the frick are the teachers not doing anything about it? She's perfect for keeping naughty kids in their rooms at night. Hey dear parents, are you sick and tired of your children sneaking out of the house? Let's hire a mother freaking witch! Let's hear from our satisfied children. Order yours today at 1 800 312. What the frick's wrong with this mother freaking school? <laughs> Questionable school habits aside, we decided to head to bed and wake up the star lecture by none other than Gamble himself. All right, let's see what you got. Magic is a supernatural power. To control it, we must use the power of spirits. Mm hmm. Um, listen, Dumbo S'more, can we move on to the fun stuff now? My feet hurt. I think I need a foot massage. Because of their diligence, no elf can refuse to lend his powers to a magician. Wanna know what doesn't smell? Hey! The fact that it's time for the motherfucking gameplay tutorial. This is a two-dimensional, side-scrolling, real-time strategy game. Try saying that ten times fast. And I gotta say, the more slow-paced strategy gameplay is definitely a nice change of pace from all the fighting and RPG anime games out there. So... How do you play it? These are magic runes, and with these you can summon a whole variety of creatures, with some of them specializing in battling, defense, miscellaneous stuff like killing people and making other monsters sleep, and most importantly, collecting mana. Which is really important because mana allows us to summon master circles and creatures to begin with. There are four different types of runes, glamour, alchemy, necromancy, and sorcery, with all of them having their own strengths and weaknesses against each other. For example, sorcery is strong against alchemy, and wait, glamour is strong against necromancy? That's right! Are there ghosts haunting your house? This wash Tinkerbell. And yeah, you pretty much just use these runes and creatures to complete a goal of each level, ranging from a whole variety of things that relate to whatever the story is at the time. Alright, that's cool and all, but is it any good? Yeah, I totally recommend it. The game is honestly really fun to play. I mean, play the easy mode. Which is the middle difficulty, not the easiest difficulty. And as someone who typically normally never plays games like this, it was very easy to understand and get into despite the complexity of the game. Especially since the tutorials are really well made. That being said though, I do have one issue with it. This game definitely feels like it should have been a PC or mobile game rather than a PS2 game. As the constant moving, clicking, going back and forth, etc, etc, it's pretty hard to do on a controller at times. I mean, the controller just weighs you down while you're running. All joking aside, it does a great job utilizing and taking full advantage of the controllers though. Like using a d-pad to select multiple of the same characters and using both analog sticks to make yourself go fast. But for a stage that is big as you're seeing, yeah, it still can take quite some time getting to one place to another. Besides that though, if you're more of the slow 
slow paced strategy game type of person, or if it's your first time trying a game like this, I totally recommend it. It definitely is not for everyone though, but that's okay. Not all anime games need to be the typical fighting or RPG games we all know and love, and this game proves that. And hey, it's getting a remake that's coming to Nintendo Switch soon. Unfortunately, it's Japanese exclusive for now. But looking at the trailers, it definitely fixes a lot of the complaints people have with the original game, so here's hoping it gets a Russian release as well. Besides that, after learning about the gameplay, I think I got what it takes to make the most adorable creature now. Hiya! Oh, frick! Oh man, I'm dead. Uh Very spooky stuff aside, after Dumbo Snor finishes his lectures, we are free to travel on anywhere we'd like, meeting even more people. Such as these two lovely fellows, with both of them being assistances to two other teachers. We're speaking of teachers. This is Adam Cat, the teacher of sorcery, as well as an actual devil. Yeah, right. We're your little devil horns and red skin. Please. Those inferior misconceptions are getting old, even by devil standards. Ah, what about the tip? Mind yourself. Or your uncouth soul will learn the devil's definition of immoral. This game couldn't get any weirder. Hi, I'm Chartreuse, the alchemy teacher. A motherfucking lion! I'm kinda scared to find out what their necromancy teacher is now. Yes, Chartreuse was a handsome boy. But now he's just a miserable beast. Your skin, as white as a blanket of snow, it was delightfully pale. You're the necromancy teacher, right? <laughs> So yeah, the teachers here are quite something. Especially since after four days, we witnessed Apple Cat and Go Girl get into an argument about how much they hate each other, dropping a bunch of troop bombs such that Go Girl guarding some sort of soul container, and there being some sort of seal of an arc maid named Cloudburst, which, let's just say we don't want the seal to be broken. Eh, I'm sure nothing would happen. I'm gonna get some sleep and wake up on the fifth day to learn some more magic. Margarita, where are you? She had done well. But she's no longer here. You're the last human in my tower. Oh, how do you feel about children's necks? The child's neck is small. Perfect for these bony hands to squeeze the life out of. Yep. I'm doomed. Yeah, it turns out that someone decided, hmm, what should I do today? I know. Unleash some dead entity into the school and make it kill everything. But who broke the seal of the Archmage? And what does he mean by the Philosopher's Stone returning and opposing those fruitless kings? Well, we're never gonna find out why. Why? Because I'm Fred! Listen! The bells of your funeral! No, no, no! Sweaty. What just happened? Yeah, it turns out we kind of time traveled to the first night after hearing some bells ringing. That's right, we're in the motherfucking time loop. And in typical time loop fashion. Oh, Dumbo Snore, guess what I just did? I time traveled. To which she, well, was quite hesitant in believing us. Oh, yeah? Well, how do you prove this? Are you sure you didn't learn it from the magical society before you came here? I didn't sleep your hours of your freaking Dumbo Snore lectures for this freaking treatment! Anyway, Avocat appears out of nowhere and is like, oh yeah? Who am I? I know. Mr. Advocat. What am I? You are an instructor and a devil. You said you defended against a swarm of imps. Then let us see. Oh, it's on, devil. And boom, after some battling, we proved it work. This then leads to Avocat and Dumbo Snore speculating that this must be the work of the Philosopher's Stone. Which apparently is hidden in the school somewhere. Dumbo Snore needs to be the proxies of some plan of his that, of course, isn't revealed. And that's gained its really cool double charm because Avocat is kind of suspicious right now. Whoa, this time is so cool. I really don't need it now. Th Wait, frick, I'm late to my next lecture. All right, who am I learning from today? I'm not going to eat you, even if I had picante sauce and mild seasonings. Huh? But why not? She looks absolutely stunning. Nom 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 nom. Let's talk about the looks in this game. Who knows? Maybe it'll help me create the most adorable creature in this world. This game uses 2D sprites rather than the typical 3D sprites you would see that was dominating the game industry at the time. But why is that, you might ask? You see, George Kamitani, the president of Vanillaware, wanted Grim Gamora to be one of the games that would be the new leading edge for 2D art design. So he and his team worked really hard to create a unique design for this game. And I gotta say, they 
they really succeeded. Some of my favorite parts have to be the unique style. A lot of anime games go for the more cartoony, cel-shaded approach, whereas this game goes for a more realistic, soft-shaded approach. Both styles are amazing, but due to the more serious nature of the game, I'm glad they went with this option. That in combination with amazing character designs by this guy, this game using something similar to the Puppet 2 approach in terms of the animations, and a fisheye lens when changing perspective at a cutscene, gives this game such a whimsical, unique feeling, and makes this game shine from many other PS2 anime games out there from time. Unfortunately though, there really isn't a bunch of designs and artworks due to the time constraints of this game. For example, they pretty much use the same stage throughout the gameplay, no matter where you were in the game. And there's an extremely low amount of characters. But I didn't mind it, as the characters that are here are really unique from each other, and you'll definitely see what I mean later on. For now though, throughout the second day part 2, we find some pretty interesting stuff. Like the fact that Lion Boy over here actually used to be Carvero's apprentice. As well as Carvero's being responsible for the creation of Philosopher's Stone with Gamo, and until he turned on Evo and the teachers had to sell him away, and wait, Kaboos is the only one who knows where the Philosopher's Stone is? So, let me get this straight. You created the most powerful stone in the world. A stone that, if used by the right person, can heal millions, create any object, and travel back in time to prevent tragedies from happening. And you freaking lost it? Ah, isn't this baby so cute? When it grows up someday, it's going to do amazing things. Said no one ever screw you, baby. No one likes you. Third day, part two. This day starts for the lecture with Lion Guy teaching us about the wondrous world of alchemy, which after that, we went into Go Girl and hide for some apparent reason, causing us to listen to a conversation between Go Girl and Harm about planning to kill this mysterious creature named Glimrit, which causes us to think, wait, if she's so focused on her plan, why not steal the container that has Calvary's soul that Go Girl keeps in her room and destroy it before the baddie that eventually gets into it releases it and destroys the world. So with the help of Margarina, we plan to do the stat. What could go wrong? Yay, we did it. Who's there? What are you doing here? You're the new student. Oh, frick. He's on to us. Quick, do something. Surely, please. <laughs> what? <coughs> now hurry and break the seal. The seal? Why? Margarita? I'm sorry, Lilith. I'm with Master Calveros. Can talk. Yep, Margarina is a bandy working for Cleverus. I mean, how worse can it get? Forgive me for one other thing. I might mess up your room. No, no, no! Frick! Anyway, after defending some more baddies, we find out that, well, everyone is dead except for Avocat, Cleverus, and hey, Grimlet finally reveals himself. How do you feel about Chogun's next, Grimlet? <laughs> Ah, goes for the whole thing. <laughs> and speaking of holes, holy frick. We find out so many things during our final moments, such as Gimmick's plan to stop this magic, feeling new to him, rushing due to Lily Blonde's story, and Advocat knowing a lot more than he is letting on. But of course we don't get answers as to how. Because yep, we're going back in time yet again. First day, part three. So we can't warn Jumbo Snore or Go Girl, otherwise we fail. And as much as I would like to, we can't strangle the heck out of this stupid. Let's talk to Lion Guy about Grimlet, shall we? And after dealing with a failed experiment, we kind of get some suspicious looks against us. As, well, we kind of are super powerful now thanks to the concept repeats. What? How could you tell? Anyway, during this encounter, we find out that the other person who helped work on the Philosopher's Stone was Luigi, who wanders the halls at night now. I.e. being that cursed witch that roams the halls. We also find out that the Professor's brooches were Grimless kept asleep. I'm sure that won't cause problems at all. After that mess, we wander around some more throughout these limited days, finding out crucial Dean justice, this guy being a spy from another country sent to find a Philosopher's Stone. Um, Armameta presents an angel show, meaning she can destroy Grimless by sacrificing herself. And wait, we can make contact with devils? In which if they break it, they are forever around as slaves? Wait, what's this about Angel Girl destroying Grimlet by sacrificing herself? <laughs> well, 
That just happened. And it sounded absolutely amazing. Yeah, the music in this game was created by Bassyscape, a team of musicians and sound designers founded by Hitoshi Sakamoto, who has created music for a variety of games such as Final Fantasy XII, Valkyrie Chronicles, and Trauma Center. And he definitely did an amazing job with the music in this game. It's a lot more slow paced and whimsical, meaning instead of the typical drums and electric guitars you typically hear from anime games, the music in this game doesn't have any of that, but instead opt for a more orchestral feel, i.e. instead of the battling music being... The battery music is more so like... It's unique and fits the game well, but yeah, it's not for everyone, causing for some misreviews. But this game doesn't try to appeal to everyone, and it fits perfectly within the game. So while it's personally not my cup of tea, I still thought it did an amazing job immersing me in a world filled with slow-paced strategy and wizardry. The sound effects on the other hand... First of all, let me just say this. The voice acting is absolutely amazing. Not only is there an option for Japanese voice acting, but he took the time to gather a full English cast together to record English dialogue for this game. Which is something even modern anime games don't bother doing at times. But in regards to the sound effects and okay. gameplay, okay. yeah. Okay. Hearing the same voice lines over and over again whenever you select a character, and believe me, you're selecting characters a lot, does get quite old and annoying. And speaking of old, we're going back to the past yet again. We're this time trying to figure out how to defeat Grimlet without our angel going. I'm Lilith Blonde. How should I say this? Do, Do you, you want to come, come with, with me? me? Mm, 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 mm. That's how you choose to protect her! Please, I'll give you anything you want. I don't like where this is going. And you believe you have what I want? Oh, I know I do. And I'll give you as much as you want. It's love, right? This bed wasn't built for two, but we're gonna have to tolerate it for now. Oh, I'm sorry. I was just so happy. I never felt someone else's warmth before. Did she just seduce a motherfucking angel? After... That, we need to do one more thing, summon Grimlet in our own so Gamble doesn't die. But how will we do that? Didn't Avocat say he had a book that could summon any devil? Oh, Avocat! What is- Can I have that book of yours that has the power to control you? No, wait! What is- I can create the most adorable creature, see? Wait, nope. Nope, not that. Ugh. Yeah, be attractive already. Nope, not a eater. Ugh. I'll agree. First, you cannot use any runes on me, and your soul is mine one week from today. Deal. <laughs> oh, haven't you forgotten? I can just learn to summon, force Grimlet to obey me, then try and throw back again, and boom, the contract is known void. <laughs> I'm sure it'll all work out. What fool dares summon me? Release Professor Gamble's body and return to hell to await commands. Whoa, yeah, you go, queen. Yeah, bae. Wait for it. Girl power, frick yeah. Birds chirping? I don't hear a thing. Especially orders I am unwilling to obey. Well, this is awkward. Yep, it turns out that Grimmit isn't some low-level demon we can control like most of them. In between that, Avocat getting ready to collect my soul, and Amaretta doing... well... We barely are able to survive past the bell and be able to time travel once more. Which leads us to the fifth time warp back they need. And well, we pretty much have all the pieces together to succeed. We stop Go Go's plan. Give shelter to Amaretto so she doesn't decide to go blasty blasty. We even stop Go Go's very lovey dovey feelings towards Lion Guy. Thank goodness. Ms. Opalneria, I've decided. To be sincere, I must be perfectly honest. Harm, what are you doing? Ever since I saw you at the palace court, I couldn't stop thinking about you. Frick, 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 frick. I am Hiram Courvoisier, the third prince, and I swear to you my true love. Go, girl, I swear if you said your own student's proposal, I will- <sighs> Time. Please, give me time. You're considering it? Well, dead aside, we summon Grimlet to defeat Kravoros pretty easily. But at least to uh, one problem, how do we defeat- Grimlet, make a contract with me. Grant my wish in exchange for my soul. Okay. You get one wish. We only get one wish for selling my soul? Lame. Ready? My wish is for you to embrace God. What did you- From now on, you will serve God and exist for goodness. No way. That wish is invalid. Great, you doomed yourself again. But I can't. 
According to the contract, I can only ask for one wish. And I know the contract is absolute. If you break it, well, it's bad. Holy frick, did this girl just out with the devil? And since he failed a contract, yep, as I mentioned earlier, he's going bye-bye in hell now. So yeah, we saved the day, but we still have to do one last thing, find the Philosopher's Stone. Which ended up being under the floor in our room the entire time. And after one last final battle, we finally make it to the stone. But there's one more plot twist this game has up the sleeve. And let's just say one of the characters in this game knew all this would happen from the beginning. But who is it? I'll get to that in a second. For now though, I feel like I got enough magic in me to create the most adorable creature. I mean, it can't be any less ugly than how Jump Force looks. Wait, what's happening? <laughs> huh? Frick. Uh. Oh no. <laughs> Me? It's the book. How was I supposed to know saying that would cause this to happen? <laughs> You know what? Screw you. I'll just leave it up to other people. Anyway, where was I in this game? Oh yeah, this mysterious person is... Wait, me? What? It turns out that thousands of years before this game took place, the events unfolded just like they did in the first loop. But during that loop, Lilith somehow randomly found a Philosopher's Stone and accidentally cursed herself to time throw back until she became powerful enough to destroy the stone. And after thousands of years, well, she finally did it. You know, Lydia could have easily ran away. After all, this doesn't really involve her in the first place. But instead of that, she stayed through and helped out, which is a trait we see often with her throughout this game. So if she could help out for things that weren't even her fault, the least I could do is take action for my own responsibilities and defeat this tray again. Well, let's do this, shall we? Hiya! You're welcome. Thanks for watching this episode, Eric Does Everything. Join us in the next episode where we talk about the wondrous world of Digimon games. Well, until next time, folks, sign your motherfucker.